deciding something is evil is not always going to be based on the intent or motive. You can intend something for good and the other person perceive it as evil, or you can intend it for evil and the other person intend it as good. So it's not always about the intention, also the result. You know, we have this verse in Genesis 50 where we know that Yosef is talking about, and you, you intended evil against me, but Elohim intended it for good, okay? So the person intended it to cause them harm, suffering, pain. The brothers threw Joseph in the pit to cause him evil. This was evil to Joseph. But he came to realize that although the result was evil, pain, suffering, loss, etc., it ended up with a result that was good. Okay, I did a search on, and you can do it too, all the, word, all the verses where the word evil appears, and there's hundreds of them, like lots. <laughs> Shane and I went through them. He was helping me to sort through some of them just because there was just too many for me to get done in a week. Hundreds and hundreds of them. And we categorized them by, is it about speaking evil? Is it about doing evil? Is it about Yahweh doing the evil? Oh, that's the biggest section. So in the scripture, he does the most and brings the most evil. How's that? That seems weird. Because he does bring suffering and pain and harm. Now, ultimately, that's because somebody did something to deserve it. So again, our perspective on evil has to change. Up to this point, if we understand what evil is, harm, suffering, pain, destruction, ruin, have they experienced any of that? No. There has been no evil in the garden. Everything has just been good. By the way, we could do the same thing with the word good. We are not going to today. We'll do that when I redo the good and trustworthy servant teaching. But we could do the same thing with the word good as good being what? Things that benefit, that bless, that are useful, that help. The opposite of evil, that build up. You and I, if we do good, it doesn't matter how we do it, it's good. The other person thinks it's good. Of course, there are some of us that do good and the other person thinks it's evil. This is when you're trying to help somebody and they don't think it's helpful. But let's just say we're both agreeing that it's good and I do something that's good. I don't need any special training for that and you think it's good and that's all well and, well and good. <laughs> but what about evil? You see, when we cause harm or ruin or damage or destruction or any of those things, pain, suffering, it may have only the purpose of us wanting the person to have pain and suffering and have all that happen. When Yahweh does it, he does it with purpose. A righteous purpose, something that we are not able to do so easily, if at all. To be like him, meaning that we would be able to have discernment and experience and to bring forth good and evil, because Yahweh absolutely can bring forth good and evil. Because in chapter three, we're told, Elohim knows, excuse me, in chapter three, we're told that see, the man has become like one of us, to know good and evil. But it's not just knowing it, it's perceiving it and being able to have the skill with it and to be able to ap you know, apply it and cause it, which man had not been doing up to this point. And so now man can bring good or evil. Except when man brings evil, it's bad, it's a problem. It's not, there's no good purpose underlying it. Now, this I don't believe was, had anything to do with them physically being naked. I mean, it's not like they've been walking around naked and all of a sudden realized, oh my gosh, I have no clothes, okay? This had to do with, and I've talked about this in other teachings, the idea of now being exposed and uncovered. They had stepped out from under the covering that was there from the beginning of creation. Because now they were in a different place because they ate of that fruit. Now they could see things differently. They had an awareness that was different. And so they, so the, the verses are here for the metaphor of needing to cover themselves up. Look at the world we live in now. As sick and perverse as you can get. as absolutely as sick and perverse. I mean, even in ways that come up and I'm like I, can't even, like, I couldn't even have imagined. And I've heard a lot of stuff. 
And I keep thinking it every each time, I'm like, it can't get more than that. It can't get, and then it does. People, human beings seem to be, have an unlimited ability to come up with perversion and things to do. We could have all been like they were in the garden and had no sexual hangups, no perversions, and just, and not only that, been totally okay with your body and body image and all the other things that make you depressed and insecure and all messed up in the head. I really believe that that verse 16, ladies, you're not gonna like this, I'm sorry, all right? Because some of you wonder, well, what, what's the big deal? Desiring your husband. Don't you want to desire your husband? I, that's not what it's talking about. I believe what it's saying there is, you're going to bring forth children in pain, and you're going to desire to be your husband, to rule over, to have his role. But he's going to rule over you. You're going to desire to rule over him, but he's going to rule over you. That's the punishment. The punishment isn't, and I'm going to punish you and make you want your husband. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> you're a bad girl. Now you're gonna, have, now you're gonna want your husband. <laughs> and that doesn't make any sense. And I don't see anywhere it says they did. I only see where they're told that they need to get out lest they also eat of it. Also means that they ate of the one and they have not eaten of the other. And now lest, lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life, which means that they had not. He wants you now. Remember, with Yeshua, we have all kinds of, we have the second Adam resetting the whole thing. This is a reset button. And he comes and he says, I'm opening up access to the tree of life to you. Okay? And so I want you to have access to now this tree of life. But we have to indulge and eat and consume and, and reach out and take a hold of. Right? It says here, lest he put his hand out and take. Put your hand out and take of the tree of life. Listen, the fullness of where we start in verse 1 is about this comparison of the above and the below. And we're being told that there's a struggle and there's a groaning of wanting to get to that end result. But what he says is this, the expectation, okay? In this expectation, the expectation of changing from flesh to spirit, there's going to be suffering along the way. And it says here, but expectation that is seen is not expectation. In other words, you're going to have to do this not seeing immediate results, you're going to have to struggle this struggle while evil is happening around you, to you, or whatever, because it's a battle. Enmity is enemy. Okay, we are at enmity when we're in the flesh, with the Creator. <laughs> 